Hi everyone, so this is crazy. I cannot believe I'm finally making a YouTube video. Um, so yeah, please be nice. I'm a bit scared. Okay, so I'm going to be making this video about my forehead reduction surgery. Um, I basically had like so many DMs about it and I thought instead of just messaging everyone, the easiest way would be to make a video. And I just want to say, so I'm one of those people who's going to say, you don't need anything, don't get plastic surgery. I always think, or cosmetic surgery, I always think that everyone is so beautiful and nobody should have to. But if you have the money and the means to, and it's something that's genuinely impacting your everyday life, and you can afford it, then why wouldn't you get it to fix it? And I also think that there's a lot of bad stigma around stuff like this. And I think that a lot of the time you can enhance your beauty rather than changing the way you look. And I just consider this as an enhancement because when you do have a facial feature that is disproportionate and there's nothing wrong with that, but it does take away from other things on your face. So for example, my forehead being like twice the size of this, it took away from my actual face and it made my face shape very long and yeah i just like i don't know i just feel so so happy i cannot even tell you like i went from being bullied all my life in high school and i just was so paranoid like going in a swimming pool i could never do that like the wind like i would do my hair and then i got a fringe but then you have to style the fringe all the time you can never just have that freedom of throwing your hair up if you have a fringe like you have to sort it out and so it really just held me back a lot in life and if anyone needs someone to go with them i'm your girl i went to turkey and i was trying to find someone on the internet and it was impossible to find doctors i'm not even joking like well no it wasn't impossible i found two but a lot of them were in like korea so i only found two in turkey and my surgery it cost 3.5 thousand so 3500 pounds and i did find another surgeon that was 2700 so i will link them both below because i cannot pronounce the names i kept calling mine dr aragiagi but i know that's not his name so i I've always wanted this and I saved up some money and I genuinely decided like two weeks before the actual surgery that I was going to go and I was like I just don't want to wait anymore I'm going to go and I messaged like two of my friends and I was like will you go with me they said no and then I messaged my friend Jasmine and she said yes like straight away so then I booked the flights and we went two weeks later and we stayed in I'm probably saying it wrong but Bahaglieva Bahaglieva I'll find the actual pronunciation, but I'm just gonna call it Bacleaver for now. I know that's so wrong. And I would not recommend staying there. So I thought that all of the appointments would be at the hospital. So I booked the hotel near the hospital and I only went to the hospital one time for the surgery and the rest of the time was at his clinic, which was an hour drive away. Now, luckily, you can get transport. So transport is ridiculously cheap. Like, Turkey is so cheap. If you're over there, even if you're poor in England, you will feel like a baller. Like, honestly. um, Honestly, I think you can get, like, public transport tickets for, like, 20p, 50p. Less than that, I think. And taxis. So for the hour-long taxis that we were taking, they were only £7. So it wasn't bad. We were in the middle of nowhere in, like, an industrial area but the um, hospital was 10 minutes away. So I guess it worked out well because after my surgery, I did just want to go straight home and I felt really sick. So we got to the hotel, the Gorian Hotel. I do, I do not recommend the Gorian Hotel. Right, they say it's a five-star hotel. The Wi-Fi does not work. And one thing in Turkey, you can't, you know how you can use your SIM card most places in Europe? You can't use it in Turkey. And trying to find a SIM card in Turkey is impossible. Loads of people scam you. They will sell you ones that don't actually work. The ones in the airport are so overcharged. I think they're like 40 plus pounds for like a tiny bit of a gigabyte. So it was just really bad. I basically did nothing all of that trip. Like I had no data, no Wi-Fi. Like I'm not a picky person, but it just got... The Gorian, I'm not gonna sit and rant about the Gorian Hotel, but I'm an easygoing person and I wouldn't stay there again. But I will say the room service was really cheap and they do have a swimming pool, although I didn't use it 
what my friend did and she said it was really nice nothing really happened for the first few days and then i had to go for i had to go to the clinic for a consultation so i got to this clinic and i just went to all these appointments by myself my friend just like stayed in the hotel it was really fancy it was this really like it was basically um, at the top of an apartment. So it was like the fifth level of this apartment. And you go in and then you speak to the people at the desk and then you like wait in the waiting room. And there's like a whole like, mini bar of like alcohol. There's like a TV screen and the TV screen's like playing his surgery videos, which is quite bad. Cause then you're just seeing like all these people get work done and you're like micro analyzing if you need that done, like it's bad. But yeah, so I went into his consultation room and we were just speaking. He's really, really friendly. It was very brief, to be honest. He just kind of asked what I wanted, but it was very straightforward. And he said that he didn't actually like doing forehead reduction surgeries. Basically, the scar, um, I don't know if you can see, but the scar is visible. So he prefers surgeries where you can disguise the scar, whereas on the hairline it's quite visible but i don't think my scar's pretty bad to say it's only been a few weeks and your hair does grow through the scar and then you can also get a hair transplant to go over the scar but i'm not going to do that because i don't like the healing process of getting a hair transplant so then he took pictures of me and i had to like stand on this cross and i was like <laughs> he also gave me a bag like a gift bag with his like plastic surgery brand on so that was just like painkiller antibiotics and then a cream. So then after that, I just went and chilled in the hotel and then I waited for my surgery date. So I actually had a bit of a mix up. So when you deal with surgery abroad, sorry, I just had to run downstairs. You speak to a coordinator and someone on WhatsApp will message you. And it's basically like the translator, like the little person who like guides you and answers all your questions and books in your surgery. I was speaking to him and then I don't, what a, I'm not here to like make anyone lose their job but he was he got it wrong and he tried to blame me so basically I was supposed to go in for my anesthesiologist appointment like examination at the hospital the day before my surgery so that's when you go in you get your blood test done maybe an x-ray and um, you speak to the anesthesiologist and they didn't do that but he basically said that I was going on the first which was my surgery day but apparently I was supposed to go the day before, but he didn't say that. And he tried to blame me and I was like, no, it's not my fault because then everyone got annoyed. So when I showed up for my surgery day, everyone was like, have you not had your like blood tests and stuff done? I was like, no. And you're supposed to get a COVID test at the hospital as well. So I hadn't had any of that done. And then they were all freaked out because they were like, you're supposed to have your surgery like in the morning. And I had to pay extra money for a like rapid covid test love spending more money and i had all my tests done and everyone was stressed out with me i was like it's not my fault and i was by myself too and at the memorial hospital it's so fancy like inside it's beautiful like it looks like art the way the building is made it's so nice there's like starbucks in there there's like loads of there's even like a gift shop there's i know every hospital has like a gift shop but they have like food stands and loads of nice places to sit so then i met a like translator guy that worked at the hospital and he took me to my hospital room and the hospital rooms where you stay are like hotel rooms they're literally like five star hotel rooms you get a huge room to yourself like you're obviously a bed and then there's like a sofa bed for if you have someone stay and then you have a like, huge ensuite and like there's a tv with netflix and there's even like a menu i didn't have food because i was sick so much but you could scan the qr code and it was a full-on restaurant and you could order like all these really nice foods from it so that was definitely a bonus but yeah really really nice room way better than the gorian hotel fuck the gorian hotel so then a nurse comes in she puts my cannula in which is like this thing that goes into your vein if you don't know and it all your like drips and iv shit goes through it paint like the stuff that puts you to sleep and then she gave me like my clothes to her and she like lifted up my dress and were like noticed that i was still wearing underwear and she was like you have to take them off and i know i should have but i kept them on because i don't want to just have my bare vagina out like no thanks not today and you just take off all your jewelry you can't wear piercings and i didn't know this but the reason why you have to take your piercings out is because if you die like 
and they have to bring you back to life obviously they electrocute you electrocute you so if you've got piercings in you're gonna get like really bad burns but obviously that's rare and no one no one's gonna die if you get it so then the surgeon came in and he marked with a, like a permanent marker across my forehead like an incision line and they don't do it like a perfect straight line because that would look unnatural so they actually follow the like natural shape of your hairline you can obviously get it your hairline changed if you wanted to but usually they just go for like the natural look and i was really sad at first i was actually like messaging my friend and i was heartbroken because i thought i've come all this way like i've spent this money and they're gonna cut off like the tiniest bit like he marked like 1.5 centimeters so i was really sad um that was still like whatever and he said he was ready to go then he left the room and then a guy came in and so you can imagine i'm like i'm not like a really small person like i'm like five foot six i think and i'm not like really skinny so i'm, I'm like an average person so this guy comes in and he's like tucking me into this hospital bed on wheels he's like get in the bed and then he tucks me in and i just feel like a big baby because like i'm getting tucked in by this grown man and then he wheeled me through and i was getting a bit drowsy is drowsy a word drowsy a bit drowsy because a woman before had like put something in my cannula to like de-stress you so i am wheeled into the hospital room and I've got my hairnet on, I've got my little outfit on, my little surgery socks, feeling all cute. I don't really remember much, to be honest. I don't remember being put to sleep. And I forgot to tell you what they do. So when you get forehead surgery, they make an incision with like a scalpel uh, along your hairline and like where they've marked it. And then they dissect your head. So this is why you don't get a facelift with forehead surgery you can get it with like in addition to the surgery at the same time but just getting this surgery alone doesn't give you a facelift so when they open up your forehead they dissect the scalp skin from the rest of your head they dissect it and that can make it that means they can like you know go like that and stretch it really far so obviously it's not pulling this because you're not dissecting the skin here and pulling it up this stays the same yeah you're bringing your scalp forward but this skin is staying the same you're not dissecting the actual forehead skin if that makes sense i hope i've explained that okay let me know so they dissect it they pull it forward and then the excess skin that's obviously hanging over they chop it off and then they sew it together my forehead was 8.5 to 9 centimeters and they got it down to 4.5 centimeters so cob and i was so so happy when i saw it there will be loads of glue in your hair and it will kind of be like your hair will be kind of stiff and like stuck in place and the only way i can explain this is if you wear false eyelashes and you take them off and you know how there's like that little bit of glue still in your eyelashes it's like that but all in your hair so it looks like you have bad dandruff but it's the glue and you can't really like you can't like flip your hair this way this way it's kind of stuck in one place so then i was just recovering and i did not want to like speak to anyone the first few days i really should have gone alone because i was the worst company like i was moaning all the time i was complaining i was in pain obviously my friend can't do anything so i'm just like it hurts like ah, crying i wasn't crying but i love sleep i love my sleep so not being able to sleep and I like, I sleep like on my side, curled up like a baby like this. So not being able to sleep like that was so jarring. I was just kind of like, fuck it. Like I could not sleep, like sat up. So I did try and like, kind of like rest myself sideways. Woke up, half of my face was swollen. And I looked, I looked a different race. I, my, I literally couldn't open my eyes. I didn't look like myself. I looked like an avatar creature, you know, cause they have like really wide nose bridges. I looked like that and then whatever side I would sleep on I would wake up with that side swollen day two your face starts to swell and then day three is the worst and then it starts to like subside I first got it done it looked like my forehead was really like far out it's the swelling don't stress don't worry it's fine the next thing I want to say that was annoying was the itching so so you can't really avoid this but everyone gets numbness of the scalp and it's because they sever the nerve endings or something they sever them when they dissect your scalp and some people get permanent numbness 
some people most people get it back but it can take a long time i know somebody commented on my tiktok saying that it took them six months i've heard other people two years some people a few weeks so it really depends on the person but your scalp starts to itch and it's the worst thing because it's itching right but you can't feel it that was just driving me crazy because i'm like and like nothing will get rid of it but yeah so from the crown of my head basically like from the back here all the way forward i cannot feel it i can feel my forehead but anything past the incision line i cannot feel so you have to be really careful if you use straighteners or like hair colors because you could burn your scalp and not feel it so be careful i don't use anything though because i'm fucking dead boring straight hair never does anything so after two days of being hermit crab and dying in bed i decided that i needed to enjoy turkey so me and my friend we went around the shops we basically just went on like a five mile walk like we just walked and walked for ages and there is so much to do and the shops are insanely cheap like you can get jewelry for like 10p 5p it's crazy like there was even um so there's like these market stalls and there was people selling like urban outfitters clothes and i have like these are cargos i have um two pairs of like the urban cargos and they were selling cargos there right and they were like six pound everything's even cheaper than that but six pound compares to the usual price i think they're like 59 pounds in england it's crazy like why the fuck are they 59 pounds but yeah, so I compared them to the pants I already had. No difference. They were exactly the same. So of course I bought some. But yeah, you cannot tell the difference. So, and I think that was in Karakoi. I'm saying that wrong as well. I'm like saying them how they're spelt, but I know that's not how you pronounce them. But yeah, like bring some money because you might as well make the most of it. And you can get some really cool stuff. Some really pretty earrings for like less than a pound. Just stuff that you wouldn't find in England. And it's really cheap. And I'm someone who's obsessed with Turkish lamps. And they had so many Turkish lamps. Like, so many. But try not to go to the touristy areas to buy those. Because they will overcharge you. And if you go over there acting like a massive tourist. Or if you just look like white as fuck. <laughs> then they're going to charge you more. And a fun memory. So after we went shopping on that day. We were like going to get food. And we were walking down the street. And everyone was coming up to us, all these guys, like, look at our menu, look at our menu, look at our menu. And all the menus, like, all the food in the menus was kind of the same. But then we found this place and they were playing live music. So we went inside there. Genuinely one of the best nights I've ever had. We go in there and um, you can, like, smoke inside restaurants and bars in Turkey. So everyone was just smoking and there was like these three guys and they kept swapping over and like playing songs and it was beautiful and there was like a group of girls teenage girls like all singing and like they kept speaking to us in turkish like pointing at our table and everyone was laughing in the room and we have no idea what they were saying but everyone was so cute and then there was like this girl on the table next to us she was like similar age really beautiful really pretty girl with these two guys and we all ended up dancing at one point like we got up and no one was dancing, it was just like a kind of restaurant bar. We all started dancing together and it was just like so spontaneous and fun. But like, I'll remember that forever and just, you know, I was had all my shopping bags, I was wearing a hoodie, I looked like a tramp. But just like dancing with all these people and we couldn't speak to each other, we couldn't understand each other, but you know, still having fun. I just love that, it's like so cute. <laughs> afterwards we were really drunk and we were i know you're not supposed to drink okay i know you're not supposed to but we were walking down the street and this guy was like um what did he say he was like disco disco and jasmine was like please let's go and i was like no like we need to go home and we were like an hour away from the hotel as well but i was like she was like please just one dance and i was like fuck it so we go into this place and it's a bit imagine like it's down the side of a street and it's like a little doorway and then the guy's like um 50 something whatever the currency was i can't remember and we were like oh no then like i'm not going if you have to pay and then he was like okay okay you just go so we go into the doorway honestly it could have been trafficked but okay lesson learned so we go through a doorway and it's like this quiet dead room 
and there's like a stairway so we go up the stairway and the guy takes our pomegranate seed cups off us and our crisps because we got snacks for her. we got drunk snacks for the way home he took them off us and i was like no like give me my pomegranate seeds and he was like you can get them on the way out so i was like fine like no one's taking my pomegranate seeds what the fuck so then we go up another set of stairs and it's again the same thing a dark room and you can't hear music and i'm like okay we're gonna die and then we go up the other set of stairs and then suddenly you walk into like this locals like indoor bar club very weird vibes also it's monday night <laughs> like it's a monday night in istanbul so we're just insane and we go in there and we still have our shopping bags and i'm still wearing this fucking hoodie <laughs> and then the guy brings over two drinks and he gives us like red bull and vodka could have been trafficked we drank those drinks and then we were just dancing it was like the funniest thing ever because i was like like what the fuck is happening right now and the whole ride home i was just trying not to be sick so i get really bad car sickness anyways so when i was drunk i was like one two three four like counting to ten like trying not to throw up i remember jasmine trying to speak to me and i was like shut up shut up shut up <laughs> like i didn't want to be rude but i have to like concentrate to like not throw up like i'm literally like counting in my head and like doing breathing exercises because like one thing i will never do is throw up in someone's car because i just think that's so like rude like i used to get home from raves all the time and every time i would get back from raves i would always be sick and i would throw up in my bag whatever bag i had i would throw up in it because there was no way i was gonna throw up in someone's car so all my bags would just be like filled with sick every time and i'd have to like wash all my stuff it's really gross so i went to the clinic again and this was to get my stitches out so you had blue stitches and staples oh yeah i forgot to say so like here you have staples and then along here you just have stitches i was thinking yeah yeah finally get them all out because you can't really wash your hair either because this all the stuff's here and this is like what you need to wash because all your hair along the front is going to get really greasy from like all the ointment like the cream but yeah i eventually got everything off and then he took more pictures of me and he did a video and so we had to film like a little video for his instagram and i was like i'll like find the video now for you all it's embarrassing this is why i didn't want to like post it on tiktok because literally anyone can just watch this video but i'm like this and i keep like looking back at the camera and like the forehead reduction and today i'm going to show you her result five days after surgery i did a surgery five days ago she had a a a, a forehead that measured 8.5 centimeters now we have something around 4.5 centimeters i want to show you the incision line this is just five days after surgery here we can see a scar line going all the way uh here inside the hairline i just removed her staples and it's going both ways inside the hair in this area uh the uh, this surgery also resulted in a little bit of a tightening of the temple area uh but not with the purpose of raising the eyebrows too much but yeah i'm now that video is on instagram forever dr rog yogi word but yeah it's a little bit red because i just scratched it but this is what my incision line looks like at the moment and it will feel a little lumpy like this is a bit lumpy but then i was given the all clear and i was allowed to go home i've never been happier genuinely like oh, i cannot describe how how i already said this but just how free i am hi um, i'm just editing this video and i forgot to do an outro and i know you can't see me right now i'm just a blob in the shadows but i just wanted to say thank you for watching and if you have any more questions just comment them below thank you bye